Well, it's been a busy, uh, busy work week with uh, my buddies Dave and Paul in town, some other guys, and then uh, weekend out of town as well. So I got a bit of Sunday here and want to move forward on the mast. Um, determined what's going to be the base and what's going to be the top what's going to be fore and what's going to be aft even though this is a round mast the, the way the pulleys for the halyard are going to go into it some other details the way we've got the uh, scarf joints arranged in it really want a set position that we want to work to I noticed it's got a slight curve. I tried clamping it. I was laying it on those wedges. Slight curve to port when you're looking from behind. We'll see if that persists. Base diameter at two and three quarters to the top diameter of two and a quarter. And start by laying out those very gradual curves such that the halfway width is two-thirds of the way up so it's it tapers more quickly toward the top and uh, so that's a really gradual curve and then cut it wish I had a bigger blade on my circular saw I'm gonna have to cut it into a tapered square shape and see if we can get these lines laid out for that edges that have a lot of built-up epoxy take the high points out. Two-thirds up, halfway between that, that's two and a half, so one and a quarter off the center line. Boy, oh, very, very gradual curves. A sixteenth of an inch each way. My buddy Paul suggested a string, but drawing along a string would be tough and uh, using a chalk line seems a little inaccurate for these tiny gradations. On all four faces marks here, 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 and here. So I think if I clamp at those points and draw even though this guy is imperfect that may be my best bet. We'll see here. Sixteen times that. Alright, last of these eight lines on all four faces. And these are going to, have to be cut from both sides because my blade is not three inches deep. All right, got two faces out of four. Now I got to ride the saw along these faces, so I need to do a quick cleanup of the plane. Oh, and I just saw a flaw in my whole plan. I lost my lines on the two two of the four faces. <laughs> ah well. So a little cleanup of the plane and uh, redraw. <laughs> four of the uh, eight lines. This is one of those moments where I got to decide am I going to show on the video how stupid that was. Alright, definitely got some cleanup to do. But, we're basically heading toward a taper. Clean up these four faces and I'll go on step which is octagon all right I've got a tapered square mast so the next step and this I learned from a guy I'll put his uh, name on the video I can't remember it off the top of my head but there's a wonderful <clears throat> set of YouTubes on uh, building a 14 foot sailboat traditional sailboat called the Mayflower and he has a section on a tapered round spar and turn me on to this device and the beauty of it is whether it's at an angle 
or not, it's going to scribe the marks that you need to turn a square into an octagon. And this is that principle that rather than uh, trying to hand around something, if you can get flat surfaces and approximate the curve as best you can with flat surfaces, you're going to get a more uniform result. And the key to this thing is, if you want an octagon where each of these faces is equal, then it's a simple trigonometry problem to use Pythagoras to determine that distance. Uh, and again, it's going to be the right ratio even as this thing slides down onto a narrow or a narrower spar. So that's the idea. Forget the name of it. Fill those in with pencil and do that on all four other faces. All right, I've got marked off the lines on all four faces, which should allow to turn into an octagon. Something else I built last time I did one of these was this guy, which will uh, be a convenient spot to work with it. All right, um, approximated the octagon with the power planer. I think I'll go back over it and look for irregularities. And then decide how to take it down to 16 faces. midpoint on all of the four faces that uh, is the joint. And I'm just going to eyeball draw the midpoint on this cut face and I believe then I can just take the 16 faces by trying to equalize the size of each of those. We'll see if that works. Yeah I think this will work. Basically, you got a center line here that I marked, center line here that was the joint, and I'm looking to take the corners out between these so that you get an equal sized face here, here, and here. Uh, of course, you got to watch not to look at that distance because I haven't done that corner yet. I think we'll just do it with the hand plane. Too easy to take too much wood off the power plane. Alright, so we should have 16 roughly equal faces. It's a little bigger than that. And straighten it up as best we can for rounding. What I'm going to do is start with a block plane. Taking these last 16 corners off. And then I got another cool idea. The guy from the Mayflower series, which is what he called his secret weapon. I made my own version of this. You hold on to it here, have a drill on the other end, and an inside out belt sander belt to run along the mast and uh, try to round it off. So. Put new tape on to keep the um, belt from slipping. 
I think what I'd like to do is glass the whole mast. I didn't do that on Brian and Kim's boat. Just glassed key places, like around the scarf joints, where the gaff contacts the mast and at the boom. <clears throat> but I'm stacking more sail on this one and uh, see if I can make that work. So I'm thinking if I could suspend the mast on pins and be able to roll it while working the epoxy and the glass on. The only difficulty with that is I don't want it to sag in the middle and then get set that way. So I'm thinking some kind of a system where maybe one or two little nails can be moved in at some point to keep it straight <clears throat> with minimal impact on the epoxy. So drill some holes to let in some 16 pennies on the top and bottom and see if that will work. So the glass. Uh, wrap this tape around the base just under nine inches to get all the way around and at the mast head seven and a quarter I'm thinking with four ounce that'll be less visible less ugly so three four foot pieces and uh, this little leftover from where I cut out for the rudder one of those will, will get us the whole length let's go ahead and produce the squared off bottom of the mast and that will fit into the mast step and that means I got to start at least designing the mast step and the reason to have it square is so that when it sits down in the mast step it can't rotate around it'll keep the pulley for the halyards aligned correctly if I ever attach a jib halyard block I want to keep that in the same spot other than that, it wouldn't really matter much if it rotated, but it will matter a bit. So we got a square base, I think that's enough meat, and then we'll be able to fiberglass in and support that joint. Got this cool saw for Christmas from my dad and Rosemary. We'll see if we can make, make this work. It cuts backwards, which is kind of nice for starting these sensitive cuts. What I'm after is square maximum square size we can get. See what happens. See if this works. I think it's going to be all right. Even got the uh, mast head to curl around most. So I made a couple of roofing nails poking through there. Bring some wedges in from either side. came out here early early it's still pretty early so went ahead and did a second epoxy on there and uh, even though it's kind of lumpy and kind of drippy I'm pretty happy with it really last part of the boat project is to make the mast step and install it and drill the hole through the thwart for it and then we're on to rigging and sailing so 
the other thing, so I do a little table saw work, maybe a thickness planer for that. And while I'm at it, uh, this is a piece from the oak tree from the yard, first uh, home milling years ago. And my buddy JT asked for a cutting board, so he's been helping out so much. He wants to buy it, I want to give it to him. Did a first uh, pass with the orbital stuff that was looking pretty ugly yesterday. 